Hi boys and girls, it's time for art class. My name is Miss Melissa. Guess what we are going to be learning about today? An array. But not just any array, an array in art inspired by this famous artist, Pierre Mondrian. This is one of his famous pictures on top. And this is what we are going to be making. I thought you would enjoy doing this with me today since you have been learning so much about arrays in math. So follow me so we can get our supplies. You are going to need one sheet of white paper and one sheet of black paper. You will also need a couple of pencils and an eraser. Also, you need a pair of scissors and a glue stick. If you don't have a glue stick, you can always get a bottled glue. You will also need your box of markers. So go ahead and get your supplies and we can get started. This is a picture of Pierre Mondrian. He is from the Netherlands, which is a country in Europe. And he ended up moving to New York where he passed away in the United States of America. About 80 years ago, um, he passed away. He lived for a little bit over 70 years old. I want to tell you a little bit about him. He is a Dutch painter who grew up in a time when art was becoming very different. It was changing and there were so many abstract paintings just like his that were being created. If you look at this print of his artwork, you can see he uses many straight lines throughout his painting. And these straight lines make up what two types of shapes? Yes, you can see many squares and many rectangles. You can also see five colors that stand out. Do you notice these five colors that stand out? Very good. Black, white, yellow, red, and blue. We are going to be using similar things that he did to create our very own array. In class, you have been working a lot with squares using square tiles to make an array. But today, we are going to be using rectangular shape tiles. Here is an example of what your artwork may sort of look like at the end of this art class. Do you notice the similar colors to what I put on my picture compared to what Mondrian put on his? Let's see if we can find these colors on a color wheel. What three colors stand out? Red, yellow, blue. And look, it goes back to red. And these are the same colors that Mondrian also used. Do you know what's so special about these colors? They are called the primary colors. Can you say that with me? Primary colors. These three Colors make up all the rest of the colors on this color wheel. Mondrian used these colors almost in all of his artwork, and he also used lots of white and black. Those two colors are called neutral colors. Can you say that with me? Neutral colors. Very good. So we're going to be using the three primary colors red, blue, and yellow today. And we're also going to be using lots of black and white. All right, boys and girls, what I want you to do is go ahead and get your sheet of black paper out and just put it aside because we're gonna use the black sheet of paper at the end. Right now, you need to get your white sheet of paper. This is where we are going to make an array, okay? 
we're gonna make one ourselves. So just copy off of me. I'm gonna show you how to make one. First thing we need to do together is fold our paper in half. You wanna fold in half to where the corners and the sides touch. And when you do that, you can just press to make a crease, just like that, okay? After that, you're gonna open up your white sheet of paper that you folded, take your scissors, and we're gonna cut on the crease. Now keep in mind, the small hole is where your thumb goes, and the big hole is where your fingers go. And we always want to open wide and close. Keep the scissors open wide and close. You can take your time to cut this in half. Okay? Now, you should have two sheets of rectangular shaped white papers. We're going to get rid of one. We, we, can, we can throw this away later. We don't need it. We just need one rectangular shaped piece of paper. Now, what I want you to do is turn your paper side to side, going this way, the long way, side to side. Remember, you're copying off of me. Okay, now we're gonna have to fold our paper some more to make some rectangular shaped tiles. So copy off of me. I want you to fold this in half and make a hot dog bun shape. It looks like a hot dog bun. Make sure the sides and the corners touch. Yep, that's pretty good. And then you can make a crease. So you should have something like this. Okay, so get your hot dog bun shape. And guess what? We're gonna fold it again. You're gonna have to bend it and use the muscles in your fingers. Look, see that? We're gonna fold it in half again, just like we did the hot dog shape. And you may have to kind of, you know, maneuver your paper a bit. You want the sides and the corners to touch. Okay, I had to kind of move that over and press. All right, get it the best you can. So now we have a little mini hot dog, right? A mini hot dog bun. So you just folded that. So now look what happens when we open it up. You should have, let's count, one crease, two crease, three creases, which give us four long rectangles. One, two, three, and four, okay? Now, we're gonna fold in the opposite direction, so I need you to copy off of me. We're almost done. I want you to take your paper and fold it in half like a book. It's, it's opened up, open it up, and fold it in half like a book. The sides and the corners touch. Please do this with me and make a crease, just like that. Okay, now watch, we're gonna fold it again. Keep it like this, and we're just gonna fold it over. See, I'll do it one more time. We, remember, we fold our paper this way, make a crease, now watch, fold it again. The sides and the corners will touch. Once you get that, then you can make another crease. Very good. Now, open it up and look at that. Now you have lots of 
rectangular shaped tiles. So what I want you to do is take your pencil and we're going to trace. Trace over each crease that you made. Just like I am doing with a pencil. So we have three straight lines. Whenever we folded our hot dog, right? Which gave us four rectangular shaped spaces or really we have four rows now. Two, three, four. And whenever we folded our paper in half the other way, it gave us three straight lines going up and down which gives us how many columns? Let's, we can count them together. We have one column, two columns, three columns, and four columns. So now we have four columns and four rows, just from folding our paper. Okay, boys and girls, once you have your one, two, three straight lines drawn, which gives us one, two, three, four rows, and your one, two, three straight lines drawn this way, which gives us one, two, three, four columns, once you're done with that, I want to show you a word problem so we could shade in our array with these special primary colors. Let's see if we can figure it out together. You've been working on problems like this. Let's read it. Shade in an array with three rows of three. Now, usually you see these square tiles, right? Instead, we made our own rectangular shaped tiles, okay? Now, let's see what the problem is asking us to do. We have to shade, which means color, an array, which we're going to do. An array has what? Rows and columns. Now, they're asking if we can shade in an array with three rows of three. Okay, so let's go look at our paper that we just made. We need three rows of three. So we already know that this is the first row, right? So let's just make one little mark like that. That would be, you know, we're just gonna show part of a row. That's one row. This is gonna start a second row. And this is gonna start a third row. Now it said three rows of three. So that means what? Three rows of three columns, right? So let's count our columns. We need how many? Three. One, that's the beginning of one column. Two, and three, the beginning of the third column. All right, so that means we're gonna have one, two, three. So let's go ahead and draw in these rectangles. You see that? The column will end here. All right, three rows of three. So here we have the next row, we have one rectangle and you're tracing with me the second rectangle and this is the third rectangle. Let's go down to the third row. Here we have Trace with me, we're tracing our pencil in a black marker. One rectangle, two rectangles, and three rectangles. One row, two row, three rows. One column, two column, three columns, right? Three rows of Three. We know that we're only gonna be working inside this space. So if you want to, 
with a, your black marker, after you trace all of your three rectangles in your array, after you trace the ones that we, we did together, you can make a very dark border to show our three rows of three. That means we're only gonna be coloring the array inside. Got it? So go ahead and outline that with a marker and make sure that you traced all of the ones inside with the black marker too. So we can really see the tile. Okay, boys and girls, once you finish tracing your three rows of three columns, make sure you put a nice dark border. We can start coloring our array. We're gonna shade in these rectangular tiles with all of these primary colors. So what I want you to do is take your marker your yellow, red, and blue marker. We have three colors, right? And we also have three in each row. So you get to color any kind of design you want in that row. So start shading in your rectangles. Now we're just gonna stay on the first row. We have three rectangles in the first row. So you're going to use your three primary colors. And you can put them in any order you would like. I put yellow first, maybe you put red. I'm putting blue in the middle, maybe you're gonna put yellow. So you can be creative. But each rectangle in the first row needs to be a different primary color. So the last one I have is red. So everyone should have red, yellow, and blue in any order in their first row. So go ahead and finish your first row. Now the second row is also gonna have your three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Now you can switch up your pattern. If I put yellow here, you know, you're gonna, it's gonna be all the same. You don't have to keep it the same, but you have to use the three primary colors. So I'm gonna switch it up a little bit. I'm gonna put red here, but I'm still using a primary color. Start coloring your rectangular shaped tiles in the second row. Basically, our array will have the three primary colors, but we can put them anywhere as we would like. I think the middle one I'm going to put yellow. Maybe you put blue first. So just choose your three primary colors. Color each rectangular shape tile a different color in the second row. and you can choose any order you would like, whatever color you want first. Okay, how many rows do we have left? Very good, we have one row left to color. How many rectangle tiles do we need to color? Three, one, two, three. So go ahead and choose your three primary colors and you color the ones that you would like. Let's see, I guess I'll go with blue here. So everyone should be coloring in their third row. And I like using the markers, don't you? They're nice and bright. It's easy to go on.
Now, what I like about this array is that there are three rows and three columns. Do you know how to count by threes? We could even count by threes. Three, six, nine, or we can count this way. Three, six, nine. There are nine colored tiles, right? Okay, boys and girls, when you're finished coloring your rows and columns, what I'd like you to do is take your black marker and I would like you to trace right over your pencil lines. Remember, P.A. Mondrian also used lots of black lines in his artwork and he also had white rectangles too. So now our artwork is complete. It's very abstract. It looks very similar to his, don't you think? Remember that black paper that I told you to hold on to? What I'm gonna want you to do when you finish tracing your straight lines with a black marker, I'm gonna want you to glue it onto that sheet of paper. And you're gonna get your glue stick to do that. You can copy off of me. Go ahead and open your glue stick. Make sure your glue is sticking up a little bit. I want you to turn it over and go ahead and press the glue stick on the edge of the back sheet of your paper. It's almost like you're drawing a rectangle with the glue stick. Now, if you have a glue bottle, you can always put a few dots in the corner, like one, two, three, four dots, and that's all you need. I have a white glue stick, so it's kind of hard to see. Some of you may have the purple glue inside the glue stick. That's always a bit easier. So I'm gonna just place my paper in the middle, and once I find the middle, I am going to press. Now look at that. My primary colored array is completed. I think you did a great job, boys and girls. I'm so glad that you joined me today. I had a lot of fun designing our array in art with the same colors as this famous artist used. Do you remember the name of the famous artist that we learned about today? P.A. Mondrian, very good. Do you remember the colors that he used? And there's a hint because they're up here, there's five colors. In most of his work, he used the five colors. Black, white, red, yellow, and blue, very good. And do you remember what is the name that we give to yellow, red, and blue colors? There is a special name given to those three special colors. They are called the primary colors. That's right. Well, I think you did a great job on your art array using your primary colors. As you go through the rest of your week, I would encourage you to maybe draw another array. Maybe one with rectangles again or even squares. You can make more columns and more rows if you would like. And you can even use the primary colors again just like Mondrian did. Well, I hope you have a great day and stay tuned for my next art video coming up soon because I will be showing you how to make another array with a different famous artist. See you soon.